So we can go ahead and get started. Um, Barb, you want to move on to the next slide? Uh, yep. All right, so welcome everyone to an NAGT webinar series. Uh, we have, this is a comprehensive webinar series um, to kind of be your one-stop shop for strengthening work in the earth education. We have webinars featuring novel and innovative work in earth education research, pedagogy, new teaching materials, and classroom and professional experiences of people like you. And the webinar series is free and we encourage you to invite your colleagues to attend and join the discussion. There's a few links there on your on the slide here in front of us um, to be able to look at the full schedule for the entire spring semester. Um, but also a feature of all of our webinars is that they are recorded. So you can always go back and view any past webinars um, as they finish up recorded and uploaded. Um, so please take a look at those. Um, and certainly if you have any suggestions for upcoming webinars for next year, please um, let us know. Um, you can find out all sorts of information on the webinar series homepage. All right, and so today, we are very excited to have Barb Tewksbury, Jen Wenner, and um, Phil Reeser, who actually can't be here today because um, he's a little bit under the weather, but we're really excited to hear about on-ramps um, to more effective teaching and fits very much obviously within our NAGT webinar series. And so I'll hand it over to Barb. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, welcome to the webinar. We're really delighted to have you. And um, I'm gonna give you a very brief introduction to the on-ramps as well as uh, the, the development of the on-ramps. And then we're going to get right down to having a working webinar. So. About a couple of decades ago, uh, people began to do research in um, student learning and uh, active engagement. And over the last couple of decades, it's, it's been very clear that students learn best when they're actively engaged in the classroom. And as a result of a number of different projects on the cutting edge, Getsy, Integrate, Starting Point, and a number of others, there are now literally thousands of web pages of resources for ideas to actively engage students in the classroom and so on um, in the geosciences alone. And in fact, that's the problem. Um, there are so many resources, it's a pretty daunting challenge to kind of figure out where to start in all of these resources or to find catalyst ideas really quickly. And the on-ramps were developed as a, a first step to filling the need for a, a quick start guide set um, that would help people know where to go and how to use this, uh, this vast collection of resources. So um, what is an on-ramp? Uh, an on-ramp is a quick start guide and it's a guide to a particular teaching strategy and the list above um, on, the, on your screen here uh, shows what the topics are, what the teaching strategies are for, for the on-ramps that we've developed so far. Um, and we chose these strategies not only because they're effective, but also because they have a wide range of approaches. So uh, to appeal to people with different kinds of classes, different personalities, and so on. The grayed out ones that are on this list are ones that we're in the process of developing. So we currently have a total of nine of these on-ramps. So what's in an on-ramp? There's a brief description of the uh, teaching strategy itself, plus a simple example illustrating how to use it a list of um, rationale and benefits to try to encourage you to use it, tips to make it work well, and then uh, additional examples um, that, uh, that show um, catalyst ideas for um, ways of using that strategy in the classroom to use as ideas uh, to develop your own, plus a set of web resources um, that support that particular teaching strategy. Um, each on-ramp is available as a two-page PDF as well as a web page. You uh, undoubtedly have noticed that the on-ramps are um, based in the broad field of tectonics and that's because they grew out of a community report to the tectonics program at NSF and the lead authors of, um, of the report heard from a tremendous number of faculty who said, you know, we really wish we could incorporate more active learning in our classes, but we really don't know where to start. And they um, approached me to develop 
a, a, a set of quick start guides that would help faculty know where to start. And so I enlisted Phil Rezor and Jen Wenner, and the three of us got a little bit of money from uh, NSF, and we assembled a, a small group of passionate educators uh, at a variety of career stages, and um, we got together one weekend and wrote the on-ramps and then uh, fleshed them out and Jen got the, the uh, on-ramps up on the web page of Teach the Earth. And I realized that the on-ramps are very directed at tectonics uh, examples and things like that because that's, the, that's their heritage. But I can't stress enough that a tremendous amount of the material on each on-ramp is very generic. It is um, uh, easily, easily used by, by anybody for any course. And the examples themselves are also, although tectonics examples are very easy to adapt to other, other areas. So the fact that they're tectonics focused and grew out of the tectonics report um, is just a function of their heritage and they're really, uh, they're really adaptable, easily adaptable. So here's what we're gonna do. Momentarily, we're going to go into breakout sessions and um, you're gonna have a chance to explore one of the on-ramps. We were planning on doing three on-ramps, but we found out about 15 minutes ago that, that Phil is down with a bad migraine. And so we're going to explore two of the on-ramps and um, you're going to use it to uh, develop some ideas for your own classes. And then we're going to get back together again and uh, each of the breakout teams will report some ideas so that uh, everybody can benefit from what the discussions um, have been in the, the two on-ramps that we're going to take a look at. And then we're gonna wrap up with a short discussion of other ways to, uh, to use the on-ramps. So the two on-ramps that we're gonna be focusing on this afternoon is the Jigsaws on-ramp and the Concept Sketches on-ramp. And we're going to automatically assign you to a breakout room. This webinar is too short to do it any other way. And we realize that some of you may very well have tried some of these strategies and will be in a breakout room where you're somewhat familiar with the strategy. Um, that's fine. And we hope that you'll be able to add your expertise. And I think we're pretty confident that, that uh, you'll also gain something from being in that breakout room, the good ideas that other people have, some suggestions, uh, implementation, and so on. So um, in a minute, Andrew is going to assign everybody to breakout rooms. And we will see you on the other side. Andrew, how's this gonna work? Yep. So I am going to assign everyone to breakout rooms and you will, once I send everyone to those spaces, you might get a little pop-up that says you've been assigned to the room. So you can just click the little join button and it'll take you to where you're going. And then to come back, you don't have to do a thing. So I will I'm, go ahead. And I'm gonna leave up uh, this banner so that um, anybody who's joining late will know where to go. Okay, it looks like everybody's back. Yep. Okay, so um, what we're gonna do for the next 10 minutes is Barb and I are gonna showcase a couple of ideas from our uh, group. And um, I was leading the concept sketches group and we had a little bit of conversation. There's a, a bunch of really interesting and great ideas. Um, we talked a little bit about an idea that um, 
well, there are several of the examples where on the carbon cycle and um, thinking about drawing a sketch that's labeled with processes, which is what a concept sketch is, um, on soils or a carbon cycle. And um, one way to um, do that is to have them focus on, on biomes or ecosystems so that they can actually have uh, more specific processes about those each of those different kinds of biomes or ecosystems. We had a uh, concept sketch that was designed uh, to have the students um, think, uh, put together the building of North America. So they would denote the major tectonic provinces and the timing of those events um, and what rock types were there. Um, and that was, uh, we talked a little bit about whether you do that in map view or cross section. Um, and originally the idea was for map view, but you could later then develop it into a more complex activity with a cross section there. Um, and so we, we talked a little bit about um, those couple of things. We also talked about um, one with deformation and stress where people would make a simple sketch uh, relating different types of rock deformation, faults, folds, and so on, to um, inferred compression and tension direction. And that was one that people thought was really good. Um, and it was uh, a way to kind of synthesize at the end of the course some of the concepts that were in a structural geology course. Uh, so that was another of the ideas that we had. Um, and one thing that was brought up that I think is a good uh, idea, I pointed out that when we do concept sketches, you should probably do it yourself before you do it for the students so you kind of know how long it takes. But um, it was also pointed out that we should think about a rubric. How do we grade these? They're relatively easy to grade because they're pr pretty visual, but um, finding a rubric. So while you're developing the sketch, thinking about how you're gonna grade them and what are the important points that need to be included on that particular sketch. So I think that's all of the concept sketches that we came up with. And we have a Google Doc that I can share with people. Um, and um, there's lots more really good ideas in there. And now I'll give it over to Barb. Hey, Doak. Uh, so for those of you who aren't familiar with the jigsaw technique, um, probably the simplest jigsaw that I know of is one that Jeff Nemitz used in a class of about 120 um, at Dickinson College, where he, he put a, a box of rocks outside the door of the classroom, and he had granites and basalts and gabbros. And a student had, each student had to pick up a rock and come into class and sit down and that essentially is the team assignment. Each student looks at his or her rock and describes what it is he or she sees in that rock. And so that's the team assignment. And then the, that's like looking at a piece of a puzzle and then finds two other students that has, have um, the other rocks, the, the, the granite and the gabbro if the student had a basalt. And then they, they tell each other what they saw in their rocks. That's akin to putting the puzzle pieces of a puzzle down on the table. And then it's their job to, as a group, put together um, the big picture. What are the similarities? What are the differences amongst the rocks? What do they think that means? And so on. Um, and that's akin to putting the puzzle pieces together. In this particular case, Jeff also got involved in this and, and wrapped it up by having them take their observations and deriving the classification for igneous rocks. So there are the, those three components. There's a class divided into team with different assignments, teams with different assignments, mixed groups and peer teaching, and then using each piece of uh, the, um, from an, uh, the team members in a group to develop the big picture. And the examples that we have uh, range the, the gamut there were a number of examples that were kind of like that, where everybody has something that's quite similar in one respect, but different enough to make it interesting in a group task. So 
each student, each team has a seismogram and they analyze that and come back together and put together um, a bigger picture of a better understanding of not only seismograms, but where the earthquake is, because they can't do it with one seismogram. Or um, an example of giving students different uh, climate data sets, uh, different cores, where they do a deep ex example and they, they analyze one example fairly deeply and then come together to say, all right, you can't put the picture together with one core, you need to have a number of cores. And once I know what all of your cores are like, what's the big picture here? What is it telling us about climate or, or rainfall over time or whatever it happens to be? Um, and we had um, uh, some, some others here that were more about team kinds of things where there was a big problem and you had a team that had a particular specialty and another team that had a particular specialty and a third one and you couldn't solve the problem until you brought all of those viewpoints together to tackle what the, the answer to that was a prediction for a volcanic eruption or whether it's a, a prediction about a natural disaster or something like that. Um, and I would say that the important thing there um, is that each student would have an expertise, but it's important that that expertise is enough that in fact, they don't have to be equally expert in all of those, uh, those areas. Otherwise, it, it, um, it, you just simply have to acknowledge that they know their own assignment better. So I can't even see my clock. Am I out of time? You still have a minute and a half. A minute, okay. Um, and we had a couple of questions, if I can find. Sorry, my... Um, Someone asked whether uh, anyone had tried it in online classes, and I have not tried it in online classes, but I have tried it with, um, with synchronous online seminars and had students actually Skype together for their team assignments and then Skype with a group for, um, for the group assignment. So. So, Dennis, have people entered anything in chat that we need to address? Uh, I didn't get any. We we mostly just chatted um, out loud if we needed to chat, and I just kind of summarized some of the things that we did. But we didn't have any questions so far that need addressing. Okay, cool. Pretty straightforward. All right. Okay. So, Andrew, can you? Yeah, there we go. So. Um, the, I mean, we're getting ready to wrap up here. So where do we go from here? So what we would recommend is that you uh, check out the other on-ramps for techniques not discussed today on the on-ramps website, which you may have done even before you came in here. Um, there are lots of them. We can link, uh, you, uh, there are links, sorry, I should say there are links to other examples on each of these pages. So if you um, all of the pages are set up very similarly to the ones that you looked at for today. And you should definitely check out the resources on each of the techniques because there are research publications that support the use of these as well. Um, next. And then um, the other thing that we wanted to talk about today, which Barb is going to talk about next, is that um, you can use these as catalysts for helping colleagues to implement more active learning techniques in their classrooms. So, you can show these to those people. And we're going to talk a little bit more about how to do that and how to um, sort of expand the use of these. So take it away, Barb. <clears throat> so um, here at Hamilton, we've got a group of science faculty who are interested in teaching. And these are not just geoscientists. They're geoscientists and physicists and chemists and so on and so forth. And we've actually used the tectonics on ramps as a focus for talking about teaching and developing ideas for what to do in uh, people's classes. And it turns out it's, it, was, it was really successful. And, and when we ran these, um, these short sessions, we asked people to put their ideas up on big post-it notes around the room and go around and talk, about, talk to uh, people about their ideas see the range of ideas and so on.
but um, the fact that uh, there's enough generic information in the on-ramps. Um, I was actually a bit surprised that it worked as well as it did in terms of um, working with people in other disciplines. So, so it, uh, it's something that you could consider for um, a department meeting or a department retreat. Um, and if you are doing TA training or if you're working with in-service teachers, um, on-ramps are a short and easy way to get your TAs or um, your in-service teachers to start thinking about ways of um, engaging students actively in the classroom. And uh, uh, the last thing that Phil was going to talk about was um, we are really hoping that people are interested in making on-ramps for other sub-disciplines in geology where the examples would be more focused on paleontology or hydro or SEDS or something like that. And um, if there's anybody here who's interested in doing something like that, uh, we'd love to hear from you and uh, provide any resources and templates and anything to make it easy to develop more of these collections to disseminate them widely to help people get over the hurdle of not knowing where to start in this vast, wonderful collection of resources. Jen, do you want to add anything? Um, well, I just want to say that there is a comment from um, from David Young in the in the group chat that says it might be useful to have a clearinghouse uh, for folks to submit ideas like we did today. Um, and I think that's actually a good idea. And we have sort of briefly discuss this among the PIs on this project. Um, and we should think about how to do this where we could have some examples to submit. Um, and so this is something that maybe we can chat about and then let people know where they could do something like this. And you, we'll make sure that everyone has access to the, um, the Google Sheets so that people could add comments about them. I mean, that is something that happened within our little group was some people made some comments on the side mm -hmm. to various people about how they've used these in their classes. So it'd be, it'd be kind of nice to, to maybe have a spot for people to do that. Um, but I think we need to have a, a longer conversation about that. But I think, I don't know, what do you think, Barb? Yeah, I think, I think so. I, th I think, um... There, there's not, it's not a very big threshold to put an idea out and to have ideas that people can use as catalysts would be really good, even if you don't have a full-fledged activity. Um, and we'll need to talk about how to make that happen. But I think everybody's on the listserv for this webinar. So is that right, Andrew? So we could update you at some point. That's right. So one of the things I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put into the chat box, I'm going to paste um, all three links to the Google Docs. So if you were in concept sketches, you can see, oh, I, we don't need to worry about brainstorming because we didn't do that. Sorry, I just copied and pasted. But it's the link to the, the Google Sheet for jigsaws and the Google Sheet for concept sketches if you want to see what um, all of the ideas are that each group put together. Uh, just email me, email Jen, email Phil. And uh, we're, the, we're the three who are in, in charge of this. And uh, so if anybody's interested, just let us know. Okay. And then we just want to remind you of all the different types of, um, of on-ramps that are there. And there's a link at the bottom for those. And you can probably type in on-ramps, tectonics, or CERC, or something and to Google and find them. Or you have them in the link in your email. We're getting close to the end. Andrew, do you, do you have, uh, do you want to wrap up?
Sneaky unmute button. Yeah. Um, okay. So yeah, I can say a few things and we might have a couple minutes left to answer a couple questions if folks have them. But uh, just to say at this point in time, if you do, please take a moment to fill out a webinar survey, um, which is now in the chat box. Um, that gives us a lot of great feedback about um, planning for future webinars, but also how to make them better, um, right? This is also a very interactive one, so we would love to hear about your feedback about how that all went for all of you. Uh, just to kind of point out upcoming webinars, uh, the next one is Thursday, February 13th, about Beyond Earthquake Locations, Modern Seismology in the NGSS Classroom. And so there's a link there for registration there. Uh, and then there's also using eddy modules for the first time. And so Project eddy modules are using open source or publicly available environmental data in the classroom and using them in a way of open inquiry. And so kind of a lot of data analysis skills and kind of using available data um, in the classroom. And so Jen Klug from Fairfield University will be leading that one um, next or in two weeks time on February 21st. And so please look out for that one as well. And always we want to point out other opportunities such as NAGT's traveling workshops program with the March 15th deadline. And Earth Educators Rendezvous 2020 registration is now open. Um, so please check it out, register, and we hope to see you all in Palo Alto. It will be on Stanford's campus. Great. And, yeah, and Andrew, there did you I did you say that there's a, this is all recorded so people will be able to watch it if they join late or something. Yeah, that, so my portion was definitely recorded. I recorded mine too. I forgot. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Well, we at least have um Jen's recorded and so um recordings of all of that will be up um in a couple of days time once you kind of get those processed and, and maybe barb could post her slides uh with the whole slides will be posted yep. yeah yeah yep and certainly there was a lot of that was no talking except when i described jigsaw there was people were busy working on the group, yeah so you didn't have any conversation it was kind of yeah. weird to be recording nothing yeah. except people typing in the google doc but yeah Okay. Well, thanks everybody for taking the time to come and I hope you use the on-ramps and pass them on to colleagues and uh, have a good rest of the semester. Yeah, and thank you, Barb and Jen, for one, putting on this webinar, but also putting the, all your work and putting together the on-ramps. <laughs> Great, thank you. Thanks, everyone. So, Jen, do you want to stay a minute? Yeah, you can. <laughs>